Good evening, dear students. Let's go with the sole complete summary. A wonderful tale is told about the Chinese painter Wu Daozi who lived in the 8th century. He was engaged by the emperor to paint on the palace wall. It was the painter's last painting. He hid his work behind a screen which only the emperor could see. The emperor admired the scene of forest, mountains, waterfalls and clouds, humans on hilly paths and birds in the sky. In the cave at the foot of the mountain, the painter said, lift a spirit. He clapped his hand and the cave door opened. The insight was no less splendid. He entered the cave with the emperor following him. But before the emperor could move, the entrance to the cave closed. Even the painting on the wall also disappeared. The artist was never seen again. Such stories are common in Chinese books written by great philosophers like Confucius and Zhuangzi. They reveal the spirit in which art was considered in ancient China. Contrast this story to a representative western painting. A famous painter of Flanders wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted. He had a fear that with open eyes the dragon would fly out of the painting. There is a third story also that is related with 15th century Antwerp. A blacksmith called Quintin Messiah fell in love with a painter's daughter. The father rejected his suit because of his profession. So Quintin one day got into the studio and painted a fly on his latest canvas. It looked so realistic that the painter tried to drive it away. Then he realized what had happened. He accepted Quintin as his apprentice. Quintin married his beloved and became one of the most famous painters of his age. The two stories show what each form of art tried to achieve. The European art excelled in creating perfect likeness. In Asia, the art presented the inner life and spirit. In the Chinese story, the emperor admires the outer appearance, but the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work. The emperor may rule over the conquered land, but only the artist knows the way within the mysterious works of the universe. A classical Chinese landscape, unlike Western painting, does not present an actual view. The European painter wants the viewer or wants you to look at the landscape exactly as he saw it from a particular angle. That means he, he wants you to borrow his eyes. The Chinese landscape is not realistic. You can enter it from any point as you choose. He only creates a path. He means I am talking about the Chinese painter. He only creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down in a leisurely fashion. This method is illustrated based in the case of a scroll. As you roll the painting, scroll up to move on to another painting you find a dimension of time in it. The viewer has to travel through the painting along with the painter. The viewer's participation in case of a Chinese painting remembers dear students is both physical as well as mental. The reason is that the landscape is an inner one, a spiritual one. This concept is expressed as San Shui. San Shui actually means mountain water. The two worlds together represent the landscape, two complementary poles. The vertical mountain is young, which is stable and warm. The horizontal water is in, resting on the earth, moist and cool. Dear students, remember in is feminine, whereas young is masculine. This is the basic concept or idea or norm of doing. 
in between the receptive feminine and the active yang the two sources the universal energy there is a third element also that is known as the middle empty space where their interaction takes place it is essential very important here's the chinese landscape leaves wide unpainted space this is also the field where man plays a very active role a very key role he becomes the medium of communication between poles of the universe he is the eye of the landscape thank you students